All right, Proverbs 18, 22. Proverbs 18, 22. Do you have a Bible? If you don't have one, check the screen. But you should have. Either on your phone or in hard copy. The Bible says, 18.22, the Bible says, He who finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. People may ask you and say to you, I've started preaching by the way, people may ask you and say to you, why will God call women thing? He who finds a good thing. That means that their value is not much. Thing. But if you are a student of scriptures, you will discover that in the book of Matthew, are you following me? Yes, sir. In the book of Matthew, something important happened. Scripture says Jesus was going to be given birth to, and the angel announced to Mary and said, That only thing which you are going to give birth to shall be called Jesus. So that when the angels could not find a proper word, language, to describe the batter even of the Christ, he said that only thing. You, know? you see, when we talk about a wife, it is not a treasure you can buy with money. Um, it is so precious that it is, its value is much more than what money can give you. That's why the Bible calls it, he who finds a wife has found a good thing and has obtained so it takes favor to have a good wife. So if you don't know God, you may never be able to find a good wife. That shocks you. All right, let me give you Proverbs 31. You know, we don't talk about this without going to Proverbs 31. Let's do Proverbs 31, verse 10. Proverbs 31, and then verse 10. Are you there? Are you there? The Bible says, who can find a virtuous wife? That means people can find other kind of wife. Did you see that? That's an adjective that describes the word wife. You see, to understand scriptures, you have to understand English. If not, buy the Bible in your language. The Bible says, who can find a virtuous wife? And then there's a question there. It says, for our what is far above rubies. Meaning that even right now in Nigeria, pounds cannot buy it. Dollar cannot buy it. He who finds a wife, scripture says it has to be favor to receive a wife. Can I speak to the male folks this morning? Can I? Yes, sir. And I would also speak to the female folks because they would also receive wisdom and guidance from the things I'm about to share. I said last week that I want to share with you how you can practically find. So today I'm speaking on the perfect find. The perfect find. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Help me teach, pray to your neighbor. I will share the honorarium if you say it well. Look at him and say the perfect find. The perfect, the perfect, find. Find. The perfect find. The perfect find. Look, look at that next neighbor that you didn't turn to the first time. Your next favorite neighbor and say the perfect find. Right. Some people, some guys, their face is very hard. They are like, what do they mean? Say, I'm talking to you. I came with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you because the entrance of the word will give light, give understanding to us as simple folks this morning. Father, I will come to your treasure house to receive wisdom of you and to learn spiritual principles that guides and brings to the place of light. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel for our lives. Help us, O oh God, in our decision making. Help us, O oh God, not to make mistakes that will mar our destiny. Thank you, Father, because we are guided by the spirit of wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Can I have a believing amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. I'll take it. You deserve a coke. You can have your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. The perfect find. The word find shows that for you to uh, see or get, you have to find. Uh, the Bible says that the finding only happens because there is a searching. You can't find a thing except you look for that thing. Do we, do we agree with that? 
The Bible says, he who finds a good wife obtains favor from the Lord. A virtuous wife is a gift from the Lord. And um, if you have one or your mother is one, you should celebrate her every day. Amen. You, you can just celebrate your mother now if you have a virtuous mother. Many guys say that they have married all the good ladies, and um, so they are very find it difficult to marry. They say there are no good girls in Lagos. Have you had it before? Uh, they say they are, I mean, I was in a church one time, and somebody said there are no good girls even in the church. And I called the guy, and I said, what about that one? I said, um, I said what about that one? I said, ah. I said, what about that one? The problem is not the lack of availability, it's the lack of insights. What you cannot see exists, but you cannot see it does not mean it does not exist. The fact that you are breathing tells me that oxygen exists, even though you can't see it. Right? So, good women are everywhere, but the fact that you cannot see it uh, does not mean they are not there. Are you following what I'm saying? For you to therefore find that you must search. And for you to search, the first principle of searching according to what we read in that scripture is that you must have favor with the Lord. And that means that you must be born again. So the principles I'm about to share with you is not probably for everybody. It's not what you will find uh, street boys use. It's not, they are principles that godly people use because godly people agree with God. Uh, first thing, you must agree with God before you follow the principles of God. All right, so if you're a lady, you want to be fine. Please listen to me very carefully. And if you're a man who is in a relationship that you don't know whether you should break up or break in, I, I would encourage you uh, with this sermon. That means that this sermon will either strengthen your conviction or you will break up after now. Can I have a believing amen? amen. Glory to God. <laughs> All right, um, let's, let's begin to, let's just jump and dive straight into it. The wedding business is a multi-billion dollar business all over the world. Uh, in Nigeria, it's a multi-billion dollar business from bakers to event management, managers to photographers, more videographers, makeup artists, decorators, hairstylists, tailors. They call them fashion designers. Don't, please don't, don't break their standard. They are fashion designers. Uh, uh, it's a thriving world out there. Every week, some people make millions of monies from lovers proclaiming eternal love to one another. These people seek to give you the perfect wedding. Do you understand that? They seek to give you the perfect wedding. So the baker wants to give you the perfect wedding, uh, the perfect wedding cake. The um, makeup artists want you to look your best. Uh, even though you may never look like that again all the days of your life, uh, right? And just, they just want you to have the perfect look, the perfect body. Uh, I know people who eat the gym months to their wedding. People change their um, routine, their beauty routine. Like um, somebody is getting married in June right now. The way they do their face is different from now. Right? Uh, they are already on a routine. Why? Because they want to look their best on their wedding day. But listen to this, all of those what you call vendors are not really interested in you having a perfect home. They are only interested in you having a perfect wedding. No one but your family, your friends, your parents, yourself, and your pastor seek that you have a perfect marriage. All those other guys are interested in your money and your perfect wedding. Therefore, as you are getting married, they are doing their reels, right? Because they want to post content. Whether you people fight immediately afterwards does not matter. They are interested in the pictures uh, so that they can help their pages uh, to drive, to jive. And that's what it's about. Listen, a dream wedding is important, but a dream marriage is better. Someone listening to me? A dream wedding is important, but a dream marriage is better. So every Saturday, people gather to proclaim love. Hallelujah. The big question is, how many of these big marriages uh, have an happy ever after? That's the big question. How many of these marriages really thrive? Or how many of these weddings really thrive? We don't know because we don't have statistics in Nigeria. Right? But do you know that the average cost of a wedding in Nigeria is about 2.5 million naira? That's the average cost, right? That's like a very small, small, low budget wedding. 
But a normal wedding in Nigeria is about 10 million naira, right? 10 million, a normal wedding, right? Don't do anything abnormal. Get a photographer, 1 million naira. Get a hall, a million naira. Cooking for just 200 people, maybe 2 million, 3 million. Your suit is about 200,000. The way a woman suits, I'll plan your wedding for you, see? 10 million is almost gone. Do you understand what I'm saying? But that's no honeymoon afterwards, right? You can go to your husband's house and just enjoy yourself. Because to fly out of Nigeria already, you need about 2 million naira again. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's like an average cost of an average wedding. But you can also do a wedding for 1.5 million. Actually, you can get married for 200,000 naira. You can actually get married for 50,000 naira. You have a gown. And he has a suit. You appear at Ikoyi. They join you together. You pay those Ikoyi guys. You're actually married legally. You may not be married um, culturally and all of those stuff. Um, you may not have pictures to show everybody. But legally, you cannot even divorce that woman. But there are people who actually marry with a lot of money and they don't do legal. And they can marry more after that because it's still not legal under the law. You get what I'm trying to say to you? So... But you know what? Less than 1% of marriages in Nigeria, according to statistics, ends up in divorce. Do you believe that statistics? It's very wrong. Why? Because Nigerians don't divorce, actually. They just separate. They just separate. So just about three years ago, the rate of separation in Nigeria went up for more than 14%. That tells you, statistically, that we are in soup. Another scenario are people who don't even separate. They live together, but they are not together. That means they live together, but they are not together. Right? They, they are just roommates. Hel hello, hello. When they can say hello, if she's gone, it's gone. The children is what brings them together. School fees, how far? 70%, 30%. There's an account you pay to, and then with this boss. Praise God. <laughs> how many of the marriages you know are happy? People there. I mean, if they ask you to pray, would you ask that God give you those kind of marriages? Have your attention now, right? Listen, many people are in bondage. The rings that were meant to signify unending love, this ring that was meant to signify unending love, now signifies unending bondage. Every time they see it, it's a round circle that no longer signifies love but signifies their fetters and their chains. Your greatest goal, therefore, shouldn't be to get married, but to build a thriving home where love lives. Listen, I've had people say, follow your heart. Listen, dear friend, I've come to tell you, don't just follow your heart, follow your head. Love is not against reasoning. If it can't work logically, it probably will not work practically. Are you following what I'm saying? I love her, I love her, I just follow my heart. You follow your heart and your head is saying, where will we pay school fees? This guy that comes home late, he drinks like stupor, he drinks like, no, not drink like stupor, he drinks like river. You understand what I'm saying? And so your head is telling you, I don't know how this can work. But you say, I'm following my heart. When you actually get into the house, you will discover that you should have followed your head. Listen, if you will love a changed version of her or him, then don't marry her or him. Because changing people is a tough task. Some people never really change. An uncultured lady may continue to be an uncultured lady. A proud guy may die a proud guy. A wicked person may end up being wicked. People who don't know God now may still not know God when they take their final breath. Moving on here, God's idea, at the very beginning was marital bliss and fulfillment. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. But his purpose, he saw that man wasn't good for man to be alone. And then he gave him an epiphany. He gave me an epiphany. And that's, that's the first place I should start from. Um, the man was given a job first in the garden before the man was given a wife. Is somebody listening to me? The man was given a job. What was the job? He was to tend the garden. Therefore, if you do not have a work or a purpose, you are not interested in an meet. Because an helper suitable is an helper suitable for your journey. That's what is called an meet. An helper who can help you in fulfilling the vision and the destiny of God for your life. So if I don't know where I'm going, how do I choose my travel partner? 
am not asking you that you should be wealthy or you should have money. I am saying you have a purpose, you are in move, you are in motion. Just ladies never marry a man who is not in motion. He might be old with birds, but that is a boy. Anyone without a vision, anyone without a purpose, anyone without a destiny cannot take you anywhere apart from the road of frustration. Does it mean that they will have all of it together? No. Even God's men don't always have it together. Abraham never really had it together. God said, I'm going. Imagine you going to someone and say, God said, I'm going. He said, where? God said, the place I will show you. Show me on the map. God said, I should follow him. But he was a man in motion. He knew he was going somewhere. Somebody come to you and say, you know, God told me to build a complaint. How? He may not know, but he has a vision of building a complaint. That's a man in motion. That's a man in motion. We don't look for money because money develops wings and they fly away. But vision never leaves a man. And every man that has a vision, there will be a provision for the vision. Because the word pro means for the vision. So provision. Without vision, there can be no provision. So if you have a vision, provision will be supplied by God. So follow a man with a vision because provision will come all along. Are you following what I'm saying? Am I helping somebody this morning? God's idea at the very beginning was an ever happy after. But if it's going to happen, the foundation must be laid well. Psalms 11 verse 3, Scripture says, If the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? 11 3 Psalms. If the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? Listen, dear friends, there are 40 foundations. You cannot build a good house on water. You first of all must build a solid foundation. When you buy a land in certain places on the island, they will tell you you fill the land up first. And you let drainage come. If not, you build that thing and water will come one day and sweep your house away. Listen, many marriages are swept away because they were not properly founded. Yoruba says, Praise God. <laughs> For those of you who don't understand that, may the Lord grant you revelation. Yeah. Amen. Meaning that a wife that you will marry uh, at a clubhouse or in disco will eventually leave you. Uh, you know those days is disco that was raining when the proverb came. Uh, when you marry a wife in disco party, you will find out that she will leave you, she will leave you while also looking at another man. Dancing in a disco party. Praise God. I hope you understand literally like that. <laughs> Meaning that where you find her is where you will maintain her. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. All right, you following what I'm saying? Dear man, you cannot marry a... You can't want a woman of God that dresses like... That has a body of Kim Kardashian. That sings like Vittorio Renzi. Are you following what I'm saying? That has the look of Beyonce. And that never grows old like J. Jennifer Lopez. Listen, dear friends, you cannot find them because they don't exist. I was speaking to a young man one day, he said, There are no ladies available. I said, What about that one? She says, She's very good, but look at her leg. I said, You are correct. Her leg is not straight. You are right. I said, but look at your life. It's not straight also. <laughs> when people don't really have a good job and they are complaining about somebody else, you begin to ask yourself, you know, let me say this to you. I think I said it last year while I was preaching a series on love in this church, that the only reason some guys will get married is because guys are the one asking people out. If ladies are the one asking out, you will never get married. Because no one will ask you out. You complain about how terrible their character is? Yours is as close as the devil's with that. When they see the devil and you, they should run. But see, you are the only one who is available. That's why they're even thinking about it. If you are saying, PFA, you know what? I, I want to choose well. I want to build my house on a solid foundation. You know, how did you choose PFA? Because I chose well, you. I chose well. Forget it. This is not, again, this is not boasting. This is not pride. This is fact. Are you following what I'm saying? 
Evidence talk. <laughs> so, so, so there, there are times you are not boasting. You are just saying truth. But there are times you that, that you are boasting because there are no evidences. But Paul even said, I make my boast in the Lord. So you can even boast in the Lord in scriptures. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Listen. Today I would like to share with you principles. Say, ah, pastors. Why? Pastors, somebody looked at me and said, pastors have married all the good women. There are principles those pastors follow. But some pastors don't marry right too. Uh-huh. But you won't hear that one. But there are principles those who marry right follow. And these are principles that your parents followed and made them marry right, even though they don't speak in tongues. I hope you understand that when some of our parents got married, they were not born again. And they have better marriages than you, that both of you speak in tongues for hours. And yet, the demonstration of carnality is greater in you than in them. The things I want to share with you are what I call the non-negotiables. They are guy, this is, these are non-negotiables. They are valid qualities. Listen, all the other things you can do without them. But see, the things I want to share with you, you can't do without them. Some of you say, I want to marry a nurse. Rubbish. What does that do to your life? I want to marry a banker. Are you going to be the bank? I want to marry a doctor. Are you planning to be sick all your days? Or you hear the better ones. I want to marry somebody with ties, um, it's in ties. They will give you specs. Light in complexion, black, dark. I used to be like that. I wanted to marry a light woman, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Lord of heaven, he told me, he said, that is your wife. And I looked at her. Even if God was fair, he should have been average. <laughs> at least give me somebody that's not light or dark, if you are not giving me light. But the one she gave me was dark and shine. You see, when the Lord, because you see, the Lord will give you what you need, not what you want. He knows what your destiny needs. And the idea of heaven is to fulfill your destiny, not to make you happy. You can watch Netflix for happiness. But fulfillment is the God of heaven. Ah, I don't want somebody who is called of God. A guy will say, I don't want a lady who is called of God. But you want her to pray. But she should not have the call of God. Unfortunately, these are the things that pack our list. How tall she must be. I don't know who will marry the short girls. If everybody wants to marry the tall ones. Even short guys want to marry tall girls. We have left the things that matter and we now follow non-essentials. You hear people tell how the hair must be long. Some of them say, because I don't have hair. I don't want to marry somebody that does not have hair. Who told you? I, my parents have hair. Both of them have hair. My brother does not have hair. <laughs> it's almost bad, did it? What are you talking about? Look at those things here. <laughs> what are you talking about? You see, what we are saying is that it's not, it's not who you marry. It is God's grace. Are you following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Now listen to me. We have left the things that matter and we follow non-essentials. Now if you want to marry right, and if the person you are dating does not have this quality, I beg you in the name of everything that is precious to you, break up with them, even if you have done introduction. And you know I don't preach easy things. I tell you truth. If the girl you are seeing, or you cannot be seeing a girl, if the lady you are seeing, praise God, uh, if the lady does not have these qualities, you will see that the things I will say, beautiful will not be there. Because I've seen beautiful who beat themselves in marriage. I've seen a man stab 64 times his wife to death, 64 times. And the woman, tall, tall. And if they say marriages are breaking down, I hope you know they are not lying. There's no exaggeration. 
It's not working so that. It's not working for many people. It's not just working. That's why you see people rant on Twitter. It is because they had what is happening to their friends, to their neighbors, and they're hangry. As I said, no, Sean Rafo Biri, he came from experience and exposure. And when they say Yoruba boys are demon, he came also from experience. These people are not lying. They, it's what they have gone through. And they are saying. And that's why we say, if the foundation be faulty, where you get out from, I can tell. You see some people, when you say, this one will not work, this one will not work. Or I say, this one, I'm not very convinced. People look at me and say, it's because I can see him. And I can see her. And the spiritual principles of God are clear. If they don't have it, it will not work. You must follow the author of marriage if you are going to do marriage God, the way God wants you to do marriage. Because marriage was not man, my idea. It was God's idea. Adam did not think of marrying. It was God that said it wasn't good for her to be, him to be alone. So you must follow the author if you are going to see the result that the author intended. Number one, very quickly. Number one. Who can I date? Now, let me first of all start by this. This was, God told me this yesterday night. As I, I'd already prepared the slides, done everything. And God said, you missed out number one. Where should they find? Where should you find man of God who to marry? The best place to find where you should marry is your tribe and your church. When we talk about tribe, I am not speaking of Igbo Yoruba. I'm talking about your Christian tribe. It might not be from your church, but your doctrines and beliefs must be the same. Don't, if you don't believe in pouring oil on your child, you are marrying somebody that they drink oil for food. They will fight. Ah! Don't pour water on my child. That water is smelling. Ah! That water that my mommy has been giving me since childhood. This one will drink this water. And people will start fighting. Doctrine, I believe. Doctrine, I believe. Work best to find a wife. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop deceiving yourself. If you find your wife in the club, she might not stop going to the club. The best place to find is the house of God. <laughs> when she said yes, the man looked at her and said, what's your own? Are they talking to you? Are you doing finding? What's your problem? <laughs> the best place is God's house. The best place is your family. Actually, in the traditional way, you'll find out that people don't really go far from their villages to find wife. They really don't go far from their tribe men to find wife. I tell people, even if you are going to do intertribal marriage, be very exposed and let, make sure that your spouse is very exposed because we do not think the same way. The way an Igbo man thinks is not the way a Yoruba man thinks. It's not the way an Awusa man thinks. And if you think that because you met in the city, you are marrying him. No, you are marrying his family and the family is in Anambra. The family is in Kaduna. And when they start talking about how they do life, you'll be afraid. So be sure that you are able to go through that process and you have spoken to them before you get into it. So that on your wedding night, they will not say they want to do some rituals on your feet. I say, no. No, no, no. Yeah, you my kapa kwata. They say, ah, that means you are not married to us. So that you would have discussed it before you enter. Do you get what I'm saying? The best place to find is the church of God. I don't like Christian brothers. You were in the divorce. You know there are ladies who say that. Ah, Christian brothers, they don't say truth. They, they are boring. They are... Okay. Okay. We are sorry. We are sorry, but we cannot be singing portable for you. We are sorry. We are Christians. We are not expected to help you with your carnality. They are boring. They are boring. So I should call you every day. And first of all, I don't even know those songs they listen to now. So I don't sing one. I mean, so I, 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 I should, I should. See, he doesn't even know how. Now to mesmerize a lady. Mesmerize a lady. 
So I should do cake with dollars, roundabout, roundabout dollar cake, and bring it. Do you know how much I earn per month? Six hundred thousand naira. I'm a big boy, right? Convert it to dollar. <laughs> how many dollar can that do for a dollar cake? I'm sorry, I'm not a forest trader. In court, I'm sorry. I do my work and collect my salary. The business I'm doing by the side, in fact, I'm still helping the business to grow. That's why I'm a man on a vision. So there's no profit. I'm still using my money to start the business. I can't do dollar cake. I can't do dollar cake. You see what I'm saying? You can't judge what fun, what romance, what entertainment is by what you see on Twitter or Instagram. Baby, let me come to your house. Let me bring games. What are you all up on? Eh, Ludo, Scrabble, Monopoly. When we are done, let's go to the beach. I mean, please. Let us understand that if you are a believer, the best place to find is to find in church. Why? Because your cultural values have been changed to the biblical values. So that even if our cultures are different, uh, the biblical values will make us align to one another. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that I can marry an Ijago lady because she's born again Christian. And a lady from Joss is also a born again believer. So we have a central point where we'll gather and reason together is the Bible. Do you get what I'm saying? Number two. Who should you marry? Qualities now. Now I'm going to qualities. Number one now. She must be born again. Listen. The worst of us is better than the best of the world. Marry a born again believer. Marry somebody who is in love with Christ. If I were you, I would even increase the marker. I will not marry a born again believer. I'll marry somebody who has the Holy Ghost. Somebody who's praying the Spirit. No, not just born again, but somebody who prays and loves the Lord. Listen, if Jesus and church is an option to her, please don't make her your choice. If Jesus is an option, going to church is an option, don't make her your choice. Because eventually you will also stop going to church. And you will raise children that will not love the church. Whenever you marry someone who does not, who sees Jesus as an alternative, then you are also compromising. Because the standard of every home that is well built is the scriptures. If she's not born again, she will not even agree with the author of the scriptures, not to talk about the scriptures itself. I'll go for someone who has the Holy Ghost. Nothing is as terrible as marrying someone who takes away your favor, your favor for God. Your passion for God. Who kills your fire and your passion for the things of God. I've seen it many times. Ladies on fire. Ladies growing in the things of the spirit. And she suddenly gets married. And everything dies down. Everything dies down. Now she cannot even pray. She sleeps most of the time. And she says, I don't know. I don't know. No, the problem is that the person you married was supposed to fan your flame. Not douse your flame. And it starts from the foundation. Me, I'm tired though. But they are not tired to go to work on Monday. But Sunday, they are always tired. Sure, I will be here. Be careful for that kind of lady. When they say church is far, but they can travel kilometers to work. And they say work is where they are being paid. No, sir. What pays you is not what you live by. It is what sustains you that you live by. God is our sustainer. God is our hope. If you are dating a guy who does not go to church on the regular, you are in danger zone. Don't try to say, hey, he's giving reason. And hey, the church I love is far. Listen to this. Bishop said something. He said the church is not far, far where value is being exchanged. Do you know where some people came from this morning? Abi Okuta are here today. Ota here today. In this service. Listen, 
People don't say something is far. When they say, is that hearing? I don't go to church because my church is far from my house. That's a, a backsliding believer. In fact, he's already going down. It's just that the head has not reached the ground. Number two. Who should you marry, sweetheart? <laughs> what kind of lady should you marry? The one who is ready to submit to your leadership. If she submits to your pastor, but she does not submit to you, please don't marry her. Let the pastor take her as the fourth wife. <laughs> the marriage institution is not made by male. It was instituted by God. And the author of marriage chose who should be the head. And he gave primary responsibility to each party. To the man. What was his responsibility? He said, you are the head. And you should love your wife. And to the woman, he said love. No, he said submission and respect. So, he didn't tell the man to respect. But he said to the man, you are the head. That means I will hold you responsible for anything that happens in this home. I tell husbands that you are, the owner, you are the determinant of whatever happens in your home. If your home is a home built on love, it's not the woman, it is you. If your home is a place of forgiveness, it's not the woman, it is you. If your home is the place of sacrifice, it's not the woman, it is you. If your home is a place of prayer, it's not the woman, it is you. Go check families where women pray and the men don't pray, their children don't pray. Why? Because it is the man that is the altar of the house. He's the one who is the head spiritually. He holds the responsibility. Dear lady, don't marry a guy you cannot submit to. Let me say this to you. Ladies don't have a problem with submission. If you hear people say it's a lie, every lady still submit to a kind of guy. Whether it's their boss, whether it's the, 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 fund, the, the one who funds their life, if they are not submitted to the husband, it's because they don't rate the man. Don't therefore marry someone you don't rate. That's simple, right? <laughs> if you don't rate him, don't marry him. You can tell if she respects him. I remember one long time ago, I had, I had this lady quite close to me and this guy too. And the guy was trying to do everything to make this lady say yes. After a while, he had hit a roadblock. So he came to me and said, I know that if you tell her to marry me, she will say yes. I said, absolutely correct. He said, why are you not doing it? I said, because it's a principle I will never do. Because when you get married, she will keep telling you that I was the one that made, him mar made her marry you. I said, let it be her choice. He said, no, he pestered me. I called the lady. I said, why are you not even praying about this guy? He said, I don't respect him and I don't think I will ever respect him. I like him as a friend, but I don't respect him to be the head over me. Now that's wisdom. That's a lady that knows how to build. That guy was very broken. He didn't know that she was doing him a favor. I can't. <laughs> she can't be the head. Listen, dear friends, marriage is not for feminists. Neither is it for male chauvinists. Have you seen some male chauvinists? You are wrong. You should need that from the room and come to the panel. Uh, she's not your slave. Oh. She's not your slave. You came back from church, PFA precis hours. You are both tired. Say, Pandayama, I want to eat. And then for you, look at my jeans. Look at my jeans. She can't wash jeans. With that beautiful hand, she should wash jeans. A poor man, a miserable. <laughs> if you are not, you should at least buy a washing machine. I am not saying that. <laughs> I, I am not saying. I'm not saying she should not wash your clothes. But you love that woman. You said you love that woman. And she is washing a top. You now brought a jean. Can you wash a jean? Do you know what it means to wash a jeans? She now washed that jean as a slave. And she's done. You are watching my you. She's done. You are saying I'm hungry. Amen, ma. 
Male is not for male chauvinist. That is why marriages break up in the UK. That guy was at home. He goes to work and the lady does not do anything when they were in Nigeria. Or she probably has a job that was not demanding. Now she's in the UK and she entered the UK as a student. Now she's in school and you know that when you change your money from Naira to pounds, it became nothing. So both of you have to work. Both of you are working. She has to work and still has to go to school and read and take care of that boy. Yet you came home from your uh, factory work and you expect her 10 p.m. to start cooking for you. If you cannot cook. If you, no, there are things. She just came back. She came back probably 11. I read one. The woman came back 11 o'clock. The man was waiting. What were you doing? You are not hungry. You could have cooked. That does not make you are not, not the head. It just means you are responsible and you love your wife. Yes, sir. There are cultural beliefs that need to change in the man if marriage will work in this century. That your dad did not do anything. Your dad did not do anything in the house. Your mom too was not really working. Your dad was supplying all the money. Sweetheart, make your wife a full housewife. And if she doesn't do anything, report her to me. They can't have work. It's not the same. The pressure in society has changed. We have to tell ourselves the truth. Do you, which of us guys now want to marry somebody that the wife will stay at home and do nothing? Because you know that the pressure financially is going to be crazy. But you know what? You still want her to go to work. Meanwhile, your mom did not go. Even if she did, she was working in state government. Or, or teaching. Wait, she closed by two. They even carry a goosey there and watermelon. And they, that was the job they were doing there. Now, she is working in the bank. Talking two for seven. She came back. You are working from home. For me, from home. You are a selfish man. Working from home. You could not even cook in me for him to cook. Ah, when she comes back. I say you love her. You don't. You are waiting for her to come. And come and do the folly row. And it's not that you are going to be there when she's cooking it. You will sit down like a king that you are. And watch Champions League. <laughs> Let me say this and, this. and this is very correct truth. If you want your marriage to be like your parents' marriage, then do exactly what they did. Get your wife a job in the local government. Get your wife a job in the state government. But she will not work in private sector. And then you expect her to live exactly how your mom lived. At that time, they also have what they call communal helps. When we were growing up, we had uncles and brothers who stayed with us. Aunties, neighbors, they can take us to neighbor's house. These days, you don't even greet your neighbor. So there are no communal helps. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Are you getting this now? For our marriages to work, we must also be a people that change our mindset. My daddy, my daddy does not mind. If your dad does it now, again, he won't do it the way he did it. Listen to this. One of the reasons why I say this, she must learn to submit to your leadership. One of the careful things she must also do is that try and not marry outside of your league. Now, let me say this to you. Try and marry within your social and economic class. If you are a low-income class girl, raised as a low-income class guy, please, you can marry a middle class. Marry someone upwardly mobile. But if you want to marry someone high class, understand that there is work to do. And the lady must love you to people, pieces. And you must understand, you must always work hard and be under pressure. <laughs> She's already a manager. Uh, she finished school. She schooled in the UK. You don't have any experience together because you went to Igotele Secondary School. <laughs> From Igotele Secondary School, you moved to University of Illinois. And after that, but she went 
to private schools, from private schools to the UK. She went to do her master's in, in, in the UK. After that, did a PhD in, in the US and came back home. You met her. She's already a manager, any millions. She does not know what it means to be poor. The way she thinks is different. She's saying, I want my children in that school. You are saying, oh, that's a waste of money. She doesn't understand what you're saying. <laughs> she doesn't understand. What you call waste is normal life for some people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you begin to have problems. You have issues. It doesn't mean she's wicked or she doesn't want to submit to you, but you are not raised in the same lifestyle. Your norms are different. Listen to this. If it's, it's possible, it's work. That kind of thing. But it's a lot of work. And it's a match most likely going to end in divorce. Statistically, that's what happens most times. Because your view on spending money, child rearing, you go to a mall, and you can see all rings of meek. And she's telling you, I can't even take pick. And you're wondering, ah, there are pick meek and others. Let's buy pick meek. And she's saying, no, this is the brand I buy. This is the brand. And you're thinking, she's wasting my money. She's not wasting your money. That's how she grew up. You understand what I'm saying? iPhone 16. You, have, you see, there are things we preach. Immediately an iPhone comes in, she sends it back to the UK, they send a new one to her. Now you have married her, you are saying, she's just, she's just materialistic. She, no, you are poor. <laughs> if you are both committed to make it work, are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It can work. But it's a lot of work. And your life is going to be under pressure. Somebody say, I know a koi, I know a koi. You don't know a koi, you pass through a koi. <laughs> they have not even opened that gate for you to enter. Why you say? <laughs> you say, I, I'm, I'm going to buy a generator. We are going to. The guest said, I, can, I, I, don't, I don't hear it. There are estates in this Lagos you are not allowed to use a gen. Listen, <laughs> men were created to lead at home. Anything that will not make you lead at home, don't do it. If I can get her, I will be, it will be a soft life. Understand that yes, it will be soft, but you will lose leadership. Don't get there and begin to complain you don't have leadership. Because that girl, she's going to be... Your, our, our father is going to tell her what to do because they have the right to tell her what to do. They gave you the house. They have the right. Yeah, your dad cannot be controlling me. Her cannot be controlling me. Where are you staying? <laughs> Who owns the car? Who gave you the job? You can't say that. So if he says, I think Nigeria is not working. I think you guys should relocate to Canada. You don't say, God told me. What did God say? <laughs> Listen to this. Now with leadership comes accountability. <laughs> to God, meaning that God will hold you accountable as the head of your home. I'm talking to guys now. And you may laugh, but this is it. God will hold every one of you accountable for your homes. So that being the head... It's not something to shout about. It is responsibility. God, you're already responsible. But a man cannot be accountable for a woman he cannot lead. And a Christian man does not want to be over anything he cannot be accountable to God for. There are ladies above your league. Take it. I'm not saying she does not love you. But who oh, am oh, serious? It's some of guy. I know a guy. Who married to get a green card and to enter into places? The marriage is broken down. Irreconcilably. After just... No, 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 Their values are different. Listen, if you marry, you can marry like that. Statistically, it may not work. It may, they may tell you it may be difficult, but it's still workable. But you have to be on your toes. You have to be sharp. You have to work hard. You, when people are sleeping, you are praying, you are reading books. You have to be sharp. Take opportunities. Use it well. Not lazy around, they are playing PS5. Somebody following what I'm saying. 
Number three, because of our time. Should I hand now? No, sir. <laughs> Choose someone trustworthy. Proverbs 31 verse 11. Choose someone trustworthy. The Bible says, who can find a virtuous wife? For what is far more than rubies. If you can't trust her, don't approach her. Don't commit into your life. Don't commit your life into the hands of someone you cannot trust. Trust isn't gained in marriage. It is built while dating. The idea of checking our phones, monitoring our movement, syncing your iPhone, syncing your Google for movement, uh, to track her, you just have high blood pressure and die. And she will remarry. Trust is primary in lasting relationship. When trust is lost, love is lost. Trust is the bedrock of fulfilling marriage. The word virtuous, virtuous, you may not know the meaning. It means high moral standard. Marry a woman who has high moral standard. A woman who has purity. That's what our virtuous talks about. An upright woman. An ethical woman. A woman who is high moral standard. Chaste. Loving. Ah, what are you doing with that guy again? No? We know you. What are you doing with that? Ooh, 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 ooh. That is how you met her too. <laughs> you met her and you slept with her the day you met her. So now you are afraid that she has just met this guy and is more handsome than you. And you are afraid that that night something can happen. Track as she came back from home. You are asking questions. How, where did you go to? Well, I saw you at that place. I saw you. Because you are tracking her. Some people are so terrible, they even put camera in their house. Who die. That's the reason many men have high blood pressure. Why would you marry something? It's like you marrying a high blood pressure yourself. If you can't trust her, then leave her. Listen to this. When God told me this, it was beautiful. I was smiling. Write this down. Write this down. If you marry a wrong girl, she will run you out of town. Out of life or out of sanity. If you marry a wrong girl, she will run you out of town, out of life, or out of sanity. One of those three things are going to happen to you. <laughs> Somebody was telling me a story. How a lady is the one who gives girls to guys. Oh, that's the name. She's a peep. She herself, she gives herself out, but to IS bidders. And somebody now married that kind. You married a pin baby. It's going to be an issue all your life. Prayer won't solve that. The, fault, the foundation is faulty. Pastor's preaching won't change that anymore. Oh. So in this church, they can ask questions. What if she become born again? She was a pimp. I'm not talking about their past. I'm talking about present. But any, because there are people who claim they are born again and they are still pimp. Ah, glory to God. Amen. Ah, that's sanctified, sanctified guests. That's what they are pushing to people. There are born again believers who are sanctified drug dealers. There are born again believers who are sanctified money launderers. You marry a pimp in whatever quality, whether sanctified or unsanctified, you are going to have issues. Because she is trained and her head is wired to go after the highest bidder. You run into small trouble, her body can become something she can use to run to, to help you out of your problem. Listen, life is too short to be bothered on things. God didn't make you to bother about things. He made you to have dominion and reign. And reign. Number four, choose someone that is more beautiful on the inside than on the outside. Uh -huh. I will explain this. I have to explain this. Choose someone that is more beautiful on the inside than on the outside. Hey, is God wanting us to date ugly people? No, no. There are people we can both agree that they are not too fine. And there are people we can both agree that say, eh, Oh, Marie. Oh, what on? 
What I'm saying, therefore, is that no matter her beauty, she must be more on the inside than on the outside. Her beauty, you should date her because of what she carries, not because of what she looks like. Real beauty is within. No, God is not against beautiful people. But there's someone with inner beauty. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4 says, Rather, it should be that of her inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's eyes. Am I saying you should look for perfection? No. But seek a woman who is lovely, only and beautiful. You know why? You spend more time at home than in church. If you marry wrong, you won't go home. I've had bankers, and I'll speak to them, and they'll say, oh, why are you people this late? Are you not done? Close to customers, 5 or 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. What are you doing? Say, my boss, he will not just approve all these things. So he just put it aside. He is not, he is never wanted to go home early. There's nothing to go home to. He's married, but the home is not good. Are you following what I'm saying? Can I speak to the ladies and say their lady life is not about shape, looks, halo, and gorgeousness? You will need more than makeup and glamour to make a mark on a real man. Decency, not sensuality. You need to work on the woman on the inside. Fix your character. Don't even make a man leave your presence and think, oh, you need grace to deal with her. Let him say you need grace to have her. In being found by God's will, Work on your character. Stop saying it's my anger issue. It's my anger issue. It's my anger issue. We are just stubborn in my family. You marry your family. I can't just take that. I say it as it is. I give a portion of my heart. That's why you're heartless now. Giving portions to people. No. You can't do that. I know I used to be a lady. My God. If 20 guys stand and say, that lady is beautiful, 21 of them will say, yes, she is. Ah, uh-uh. ah. No. God uses right time. You know, there are ladies that ladies say they are beautiful. And they say, no, no, no. Uh-uh. This lady was a beautiful girl, very beautiful girl. But her character, oh, Jesus. Oh, no, no, the story does not mean she didn't get married. She got married. Had a very crazy good marriage. I saw a good wedding. Loud. You know why he said, Oma, loud gone. This one was loud gone. It's not Oma, oh, loud gone. And after one, I, one and a half years, I started seeing her on, on reels. And the ring was out of the hand. I was wondering, I thought that was a diamond ring. My mom, my yo, she has removed it. Marriage has ended. Less than two years. You know why? It's not beauty. It's what you're looking for on the inside. The church I used to be, Rema Chapel, I was a very important bachelor. And some of these who are students then, who knew me are here, and they knew, ah, spirit man, anointed. You know, Lagos, <laughs> we have not really <laughs> couples here. Uh, they wait for me to preach. And so they were waiting. Somebody saw us yesterday now and said, we, we guys will wait for him. He was telling him. I just come in and looking. Let them share my testimony. Let them be listening. When I said this is of my wife, people were angry for me. Very angry. I said, look at all these girls. Beautiful. He did not. Ah, me, I saw the future. <laughs> so what they wanted was for me to marry someone light. Someone that when she comes in, the show stops. But my life can also stop. <laughs> no, you are made in the image of Christ, and you must stop at nothing until you are conformed to his image. Listen to this, dear lady. Every man is looking for peace, not war. Every man. If they ask you what is a man looking for, they are looking for peace, not war. You understand what I'm saying? Be an example of peace. Number five, choose someone who is prudent in financial matters. Proverbs 31 verse 16. 
The Bible speaks concerning that kind of woman. Marry a saver, not a waster. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, he said, I've learned to abound and unto abase. Look out for builders. Builders are savers. Spenders demolish things. A wise man will help you, a wise woman will help you increase your finance. A foolish woman will demolish it. You are dating her. And it's three days of Valentine. And you have not paid your house rent. And she wants to kill you because you're not buying her wig. You are not changed phone for her. Run for your life. <coughs> Run for your life. You know why? That one does not care about you. She doesn't. I tell you a story. There's this woman, this guy who works in an oil company. You know what that means? When I, I don't mean that. You know, I've heard that now that, that people who work as petroleum as petrol attendants now say they work in oil company. <laughs> Packaging as key, as key people in this Lagos. I mean people who originally worked in oil company. So she wa he was working in an oil company. I won't mention the name, but big boy by own standard. Got married to this lady. And this lady too. Butter and all of that. And they were doing well together, right? And um, suddenly she began to tell the guy, listen, you're bigger than this work. We can start our own, start a service thing on the parallel. You know, people who lie to you, they are very dangerous. And then that was not the story. Eventually, uh, because every, every year they go on vacation. They go on vacation. That's how they were, France, UK, and all of that. So, he resigned his job. Because you are bigger than this, baby. I trust you. You have so much. You're loaded. He resigned. Now, they started a company. And the company was just, they are making money, but it was, they were still struggling. And the lady insisted they must go for vacation that year. He took a loan and they went. That was the beginning of the end of that business. I always go on vacation. I always go on vacation. But you don't have sense. Can't you see our finances? If you don't go this year, will you die? A waster. A waster. Number six, choose someone diligent and hardworking. Proverbs 31, 11 to 12. Bible says, the art of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. A lazy person cannot build a home. I hope you know. I hope you know that building a home is hard work. I hope you know raising children is hard work. Ah, uh, no, don't say yes, sir. When you have them, you will know what I'm talking about. But I'm just telling you, preparing your heart is hard work. You can ask her, Mommy Adekuni at the back. After seven children and seven grandchildren, she will tell you it is hard work. Sometimes, somebody says she comes to church sometimes looking very, very, her face is so hard. Say, why? I said, she's tired. Tired. Let's see seven children with seven grandchildren and they are in the same city with you. People, imagine if my parents are here. Weekends, sure bet, they are good. my children will go to their father, to their grandfather. That's your daddy. That's what they do for her. So how do you think she will look when she comes? In fact, I told her, I said, just seven grandchildren. It's going to be like 10. At that time, her children will surround her table like a shield. She will just be watching streaming of service. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Marriage is hard work. So combine, you are complaining now of work. Abby, you get to me, I complain. You are not doing anything, just sleep. When you come back, your husband will want you to talk. Or you want to talk to your husband. Because now you don't have anybody to talk to. That's why you are sleeping. You want to talk to your husband. After that time, you will have to find food. Now, when you are pregnant, you will push that body to work. Inside traffic. Even if they get you a driver. When you are coming, even if you are in the UK, it's the same thing. In fact, UK is worse. Because in hot weather, with pregnancy, you will go. You go to work in December. You see, it's like you are smoking. You see the way you are breathing. I'm just trying to say it's hard work. Adulting is a scam. If they tell you you are going to enjoy anything, they are lying. Well, you are going to have to work hard. It doesn't get any better. Thank God you came to this kind of a church. You know, I tell you the truth. Ah, no. When you are sleeping, you have your first baby. 
People carry, she's so lovely, she's so sweet, you feel like slapping them. <laughs> because she never sleeps at night. But when, they, when they, she sees them, she sees them, she's always just sleeping, never crying. But let them go out. Then she will show herself. Hard work. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Number seven, choose someone who speaks the truth. Don't marry someone who deceives you. Marry someone who can tell you the truth. If she tells you the truth, that is someone you should look closely at. People, some guys hate ladies that tell them truth. You should marry that kind of a lady, not a one that deceives you. You are doing well. You are not doing well. You are not doing well. No, you are not doing well. God says, I tell you again the third time. To speak the truth in love could mean expressing how you are feeling about your relationship. Sharing your story. Find someone who will not always tell you what you want to hear. But what you should hear. Don't mind someone who will join you in lying to yourself. Find yourself someone who can tell you the truth and give them permission to tell you the truth. Because that's what many guys, ego, the ego is as high as, which building is highest in this Lagos? As, as in, but you know Lagos does not even have a, any high tower. How is that even, how is that even real? How is that even real? I remember my daughter was asking me, what is high rising building? I said, I don't know what we can talk about here. But some is like Bot Caliber. Very high like that. That's how their hair goes. Amy Lomba Soro, yeah? Who are you? You are a clay. You see, the truth is that if you marry a wise woman, like I said, you should marry a wise woman, then devolving to her will make sense to you. Because you know that she's smart. You know that's the thing she tells you. If you marry a smart woman, listen to her will be sound advice. I follow what I'm saying. I follow what I'm saying. If I don't listen to my wife, I won't have cobble. I say this, cobble. Nothing. I will spend everything. Because tomorrow, the Lord God of heaven will supply my needs. <laughs> and you know what? The day she does not supply, I'm fine. I'm never, I will never enter depression. I'm good. But is that the way to live? No. So you hear her say, let us save. You hear me say, it's okay. It's okay. Or sometimes I don't say anything. Just do, let's do what you think is okay. Because if it is me, I can't I can, I can save for six months and just decide that it's okay <laughs> to ball. And I'll go to a restaurant in the Queen and I'll finish it. And I'll come home and I'll sleep away. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with that. I can buy clothes. And I'll say, I'll buy her clothes. Empty my account and buy her clothes. And she'll be thinking, I don't have money in my account. Me, I'm fine. But is that not the way to live? Because when your bills come at you, you can't speak in tongues. Because there are prayers who will tell God and God will say, I, well, I supplied that one. In November. Write it. I will not say mercy, oh God. <laughs> say, when will you be wise? You see what I'm saying? Devolving to your woman in the place of your weakness is strength, not weakness. That's why he's called an help me. That's why when I see somebody marrying, my brother will say, the most important thing in getting married when we're young he will say, never marry somebody who cannot think on your level. For us, it was not beauty. It was never marry someone who cannot think on your level. So that we are talking about Chelsea. We walk club. I say, my dad used to drink Saying you want to do master, I say, what is that? What is that? You don't need it. You don't need it. Just go to Balogun. You don't need it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Let me give you two more. Choose someone who supports and is interested in you. I told you last week when the Lord told me that was my wife, 
The first night, I said, oh, it's okay. <laughs> She's always been interested in helping me. Advice that I didn't solicit for. Give me that card. It's good. Let her cook, come as a wife. I'm giving the advice full-time basis. Right. Because I could see she was interested in me. Ladies and gentlemen, you can woo a lady. But after you have wooed a lady, she's still not interested in you. Don't ask her out for marriage. Just break up. Sweetheart, break up. Break her heart. Break it well. Because she's not interested in you. If you don't, she will break it. She doesn't even want to hear about your dreams and visions. Let her go. She's not interested in you. If she, if she finds you boring, don't date her. Don't try and crack unnecessary jokes because of her. Some ladies will find your boy interesting. I, do, I can't believe that's the guy they said is boring. One more, that guy is boring. It's you that you can't find it because you love him. I can't find it. That's what he's saying. If a guy, if a lady doesn't find you interesting, let her go. She's not interested in your life. You talk about vision. And oh, so, because it, it, how they, you know is that anytime you want to talk about it, she's either sleeping or she's not listening. She's not interested in you. You don't have to like the same things. But what you don't like is what some people want. It does not speak. It's too quiet. Some people like it. I can't be a lady now, Mary Philip. I cannot. I cannot. Mary Philip, as a lady, I can't. I can't take it. It's quiet. It's very quiet. If I'm talking to him, you say 20 things. Philip will say two. And I'm wondering, ah. But you know what? Some ladies, that's what they like. It's just so cool and quiet. In fact, they will not now call it quiet. Say it's calm. It's so calm. That's when you find love. <laughs> it's so reserved. They want reserved. Me, I don't want reserved. I'm already preserved by God. I'm not, I'm not reserved. You get what I'm saying? And that tells you that we are, that's why God did not create everybody in the same flavor. That's strawberries. So that those who like vanilla can find something to eat. My wife says, I, I will never have married a light guy. Never. Imagine that. And I did not want to marry a dark guy. Imagine that. So that if Desmond was coming to my wife and saying, hey, 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 hey. You see what I'm saying? I know. Where, where did we find this episode? Why is it this one? You know what I'm talking about? Because she's not interested. But some people are. I just like light guys. Not the one that bleach, natural light guys, because you know there are bleach ones. Let's go to scriptures. How can you bleach? Don't marry people who bleach. That's number nine. Is that number nine? <laughs> That's not number nine. Okay, okay. Let me give you number nine now. I thought you took that as nine. Yes. You took it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, choose someone who has a strong sense of purpose. Choose someone who has direction and a strong sense of purpose. Life is meaningless without a sense of purpose. See someone who knows what she's living for. Don't be afraid at her vision. But let her have a vision. If she does not have a vision, you will become the vision. So that you won't be able to go out. She's watching you. She's following you. You are tired. You are too loved. You are choked in love. Because she doesn't have a vision. <laughs> Let her have a vision. And encourage it. Encourage her vision. Dear man, if you don't know why you are born, you don't know where you are going. There are no dreams and visions of your heart. Then you don't need an help meet. Just stay single. Solidly single, and the Lord bless you. Listen, you don't just get married because you are getting old or because you have an uncontrollable libido. Marriage is not the cure to unbridled lust. You get married because you have found a helper suitable for your journey. I hope I've helped somebody. Listen, marriage is not the cure for lust. Though. 
You know how Yoruba mothers used to advise us those days? I don't know whether Igbo men advise them, that Igbo women, I don't know. That they would say, ah, the guy is just lost, he likes girls too much. Let him marry. When he marries, it will cure. When he marries, it... you hear people say that? Have you heard it before? It never cures anything. Marriage is not the cure for lust. In fact, she will now be go will going from one to another. What they just want to do is that she will now have a woman who it will be her progress from this to be praying for him and to be crying every day. You know, I told you that if you marry wrong as a prayer warrior, you will become the prayer points. Every day they wake you up and like, say, Oh, Lord, pray. <laughs> They're asking for prayer points. Is this my prayer point? It is my prayer point. But you don't marry a prayer point. Amen. One of my daughters called me recently. He has married, she has married a prayer point. I said, What do you do now? She's probably watching this or listening to this later. But she now will say it. Because I have to help you. So what will you do now? Do you want to get out? I cannot get out, sir. I say, I know. Even if I say you want to get out, I say, don't get out. I say, you will now need to pray. Marriage is spiritual. You now need to pray for this man. Pray! I said, do you remember one room, the movie? I said, this is exactly what happened. Have a room now where you are praying. You pray. And I cannot tell you how long it will be. But you pray. You can't pray, you will pray. Oh. But if you no pray, this man will kill you. Oh. You will pray, you will pray. Oh. You pray. But so that it does not happen, I will teach you, dear lady, what you should look for next week. No, next two weeks. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Number 10. Finally. Someone, who should you marry, sweetheart? Oh, sorry, it's not you. It's not girls. Guys, who should you marry? I can't call you sweetheart. <laughs> who should you marry? Marry someone who cares and genuinely love other people. Love other people. Don't marry someone who only cares about you. It's one of the gravest mistakes men make. Oh, she's so loving. She's so kind. Listen, if she's only kind to you, she's not a good person. She's not. Watch how she treats others. That is how she is. Watch how your partner treats other people. It is a better judge of their character than how they treat you. Oh, she makes you feel like a king. But when you go to a restaurant, she makes the servers, or what do you call it? They're servers now. She makes the servers... The waiters, she makes them feel like they are non-entities. Now, she's not a good person. That kind of person are the people you see on social media now that are beating their housemaid with fire on their bum bum and, and rashes everywhere because they are terrible people. Don't marry terrible people. If she's born again and she's a member of this church, don't marry her. Let God work on her character first. Let her be humble first. Then we will now pray for her that God should send her somebody. Don't marry a bad person. I, I, do you agree that there are people who are terrible? Yes. There are ladies who are terrible. How can you put iron and put it on somebody else? And you look at your children. I took my kids to school the other day, and I saw an housemaid coming out of the car. The kind of car she was coming out from. Now, that car should be like maybe 27 million naira. The Tokumbo. She was coming out, and she looked like she was coming from the road, like she'd never slept inside the house. And the boy that was following, that she went to pick, that one looks like she just, he just dropped from the UK. Are people mentally sick? How can somebody that dirty, looking that dirty, be taking care of your boy, and you are not thinking that you are even putting that boy at risk? But wickedness will do that to you. Madness will do that to you. There are mad people in the society. Mad ladies. Ah, you know I, I support ladies. But they are mad ladies. Take it to the bank. Ladies where you marry, they don't want to see your family. When she talks already, she's telling you, you know when we get married, 
You know, when we got married, we said, our house is our house. Um, no family lives with us. Nobody lives with us. Uh, la, 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 We say all those things. You say things you say when you're just a baby, a child. Love is just driving you. We say we agree, we agree. We, I think probably we even prayed about it. I said, no, that's our home. That's our house. Glory to God. <laughs> Listen, dear friends. Uh, it wasn't them alone. It wasn't family. It was the whole church of God that was in our house. The whole church of God was in our house. I mean, I remember my sister came to Lori to do her IT. They, did not, they just called me that my sister is doing an IT. What will we say? I, we have decided in our family that... So... My dad would say, are you a pastor in the church? I even know my dad would say, I'm only Latin by number George Adiboye. Because you are not a good person. He will say it straight. Because oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm as blunt as he is. He will make animals. That they are there does not mean that, will, that their presentness is going to be, ever be like that. People change. Values change. Will they pay you back? No. Some people will even stone you after they leave your house. Uh, it's in the record. But listen to that. The most important thing for you to do is to marry a good person. If you marry a good person, you are most likely going to have a good marriage. But if you marry a bad person, your own is done for. Dear sweetheart, if he is a dupe, he will not change because he married you. He will be a dupe. He will dupe you eventually. If he's a fraudster, he will, he will, he will, he will defraud you. Listen, people don't just change. Who you marry is who you will live with. If the present version of him is not what you like, let her go. Don't say, you know what, if you can just drop weight a little. I close with this story. A man came from the U.S. many years ago and told my father and the Lord, I need a wife. I need a wife. And so they will, you know, in every church, as your church grows older, uh, you have people who are holding the church who are not yet married, uh, or people who are just eligible. So they would, Baba will call them and say, ah, <laughs> come to the house now. They will come. He will be talking with them. He say, ah, Baba, I don't want that one. Baba, I don't want that one. So after like four, ah, he say, which one do you now want? Baba, you don't have big girls, big ones. Big ones! <laughs> big ties, big girls, you don't have them? Say, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, that's what you are looking for. He said, that's what? When I hug her, I should not hug somebody. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. And they found out that was, hey, this is it, Baba. This is what I'm looking for. So that you are just killing yourself in the gym. If he will like you that way, he will like you that way. Yeah, just please, if you, I love you, but you have to reduce your weight more. I love you, but if you can just be making your hair, I love you if you can be wearing high heel like my wife. Oh. <laughs> I love you if you can do those things. That's not the way it works. Do you love the person the way they are? Because change is a risk. It's like Nara bet. It may never happen. The odds is about hearts. It's a game of odds. Do you like her the way she is? Do you like the way she talks? Do you like the way she demonstrates when she's angry? She will not be perfect. You take some things with it. She may laugh. <laughs> You're not laughing like a lady. It's okay. It's okay. Can you deal with those ones? Can you deal with those? That's how to, that's how to get perfect fine. Do you see that? I, I did not tell you about shape. And because you can do that in, at the gym. Register both of you and be going to the gym. She will lose weight. There's nobody who is not fine. When we were growing up, we used to think that. Uh, do you remember Anize? Uh, we thought Shego Anize was a definition. I'm, I'm sorry, apologies to all of those involved. We used to, every one of us thought he was very ugly. And then the man entered into small money like this. And we saw that even the chicks that seemed to contradict the high balls complimented each other. Because the chicks came out and he became fresh. Listen, there is nobody who is ugly. It's poverty that is affecting them. 
when money comes, they will start wearing the things that fit them. They will start getting to the airport. They know a Baba that will do the better job than this 700 naira jar on that bridge one. They know it's money. When money comes, they thrive. Dear lady, these guys are projects. God is their backer. God is the one financing their life. You find a guy who is in motion. He might not look completely like it, but you should consider and think about him because he might be the one for you. Don't marry someone who doesn't have a job, who doesn't want to work, who is lazy. But that's a message for another day. Have I helped you guys? Have I helped you? Have I helped you? Bow down your head, bow down your heart, and, and say, Lord, I receive favor. We, I know, I, I, we started by saying a good wife is from the Lord. Um, so can you say, Lord, I receive favor? I receive favor. It takes favor to find. Lord, I receive favor. Lord, I receive favor.